the title of the, the this uh, speak is uh, applications of genomics on Brazilian dairy farms. Uh, just a little background. So uh, Brazilian dairy industry is based mainly on pasture-oriented uh, production systems. And uh, in general, the farmer here, is, uh, here uh, use the dual-purpose systems, uh, basically using uh, Bostorus and Bosidicus hybrid animals, mostly uh, hosting and gear. So in general, uh, we have a breed, a special breed here called Girolando, which is a 5 8 hosting, 3 8 gear animal. But in a general sense, we call Girolando any animal between, uh, uh, with a uh, breed composition between hosting and uh, gear. So 80% of the milk produced in Brazil uh, comes from the Girolando cows. So that's a very important breed for us. Uh, the cows in general are milked uh, with a uh, restricted suckling of calves. The average herd size is about 80 cows, and uh, we have about 18 million dairy cows around uh, or distributed in 1.3 million farms. And uh, maybe here we have like 15 million Girolando cows. So uh, how important is the dairy sector in Brazil? Uh, milk is produced in every county in Brazil. So we produce uh, more uh, something uh, around uh, 35 billion liters per year in, uh, with an annual growth close to 3%. This data uh, is from uh, 2021. Uh, we have 4 million jobs dire directly and indirectly related to the dairy sector. The gross sale is about 7.5 billion, and the turnover is uh, over to uh, 18 billion. And uh, it's uh, around 1% of the GDP comes from the dairy sector in Brazil. So uh, just... Uh, well, I intended just to talk a little bit about this background first, because it's important to say about the gear breed and the gear Orlando breed. So uh, the gear breed is mostly uh, raised in Brazil to uh, produce gear Orlando animals. And uh, the gear Orlando is uh, uh, distributed in all the, the uh, all over the country, and uh, especially in the uh, southeast part and the northeast part. Uh, Embrapa Dairy Cattle started uh, working of the, uh, with the national breeding program of the daily gear breed in 1983. So this is uh, uh, dairy gear or milking gear call. And uh, with the Gear Orlando, we started in 1997 with the national breeding program. So this is a Gear Orlando call. And the Girolando and gear breeding programs, they are based on a progeny testing. And uh, we use uh, a progeny testing distributing uh, semen of highly selected bulls all over the country, especially in the southeast part, in the Middle East. Uh, of course, these actions require uh, huge resources, both financial and infrastructural, because we have not just to distribute the same, but collect all the phenotypic information as well, well all over the years. And uh, in Brazil, usually we have this uh, national programs developed by Embrapa in the Breed Association together. So talking about the genomic selection, uh, we are trying to expand our uh, uh, genomic selection programs to both Cindy and the Guzera, but uh, for now, we just have, uh, have results for the gear in Gilolando, and uh, the farmers here in Brazil are using this uh, genomic information in a large sense. So uh, how we uh, uh, connect the, the progeny testing and then genomics, because we don't have a very a huge reference population. We have to associate the uh, progeny testing and the genomic selection together. So what we are doing now is uh, getting the uh, uh, young bulls from the farms and we test using uh, the genomic technology. We test all these young bulls uh, for the farmers and we uh, gave a, uh, give a report to the farmers 
showing him which is the best bull for the progeny testing. So uh, our team in the Brapa Dairy Cattle has developed a product called uh, uh, Cladified Gilolando, which has the, the commercial exploitation by CRV and Zoetis. After that, we uh, got, uh, get all these bulls here. So in general, 35 up to 40 bulls, and we have all the uh, quality semen uh, for these bulls uh, evaluated. And then we have the progeny test. Every year, we have the pre-selection based on genomics and the quality semen. And every year, we launch a, a sire summary for all the, the bulls here in the Girolando. Especially here for uh, the Girolando, we use three quarters uh, hosting bulls and five eighths hosting bulls. Uh, this is just an example of the report we, we provide to the farmers. So we analyze in this case here uh, 18 bulls and we show to the producer which is the best bull for uh, the progeny testing. So all the bulls uh, that are going to the progeny testing, they are genomic evaluated first. But because we have to connect the genomic selection and the progeny testing, we don't provide the genomic PTA for uh, the, the, the producer. We just use a strategy like the STAs or the standardized uh, uh, value to show which is the, the best bull and uh, uh, the, the farmer is uh, uh, like obligated to include this bull in the progeny testing. So by now, for the dairy year, we have in the Brazilian population close to 120,000 animals uh, registered. So uh, we have per year uh, 11,000 animals registered, and we are genotyping 72% uh, of those animals per year. So we have like 8,000 animals or young animals genotyped per year, both females and males. Uh, our reference population is about 45,000 uh, animals genotyped. All the bulls in the progeny testing are genotyped already. And uh, by now we have uh, almost 600 tested bulls in 280 under evaluation, but already with the genomic STA. This is just uh, to show you that we have, uh, during our genomic evaluation, we tested uh, two different reference populations in uh, five different uh, uh, SNP chip densities, and we got a very nice results for uh, the reliability here, it's uh, more than 65% uh, for uh, milk, but we have uh, similar results for fat, protein, and age at first Kelvin. Uh, today we have uh, more than 27 different traits evaluated for the year, and uh, 18 uh, different traits for Giolando, including the heat stress tolerance. So those results are published in the Journal of Dairy Science some uh, years ago. And uh, here we have the genetic trend for the uh, gear. So we have, uh, uh, since we started the uh, progeny test in 1983, we have uh, uh, a small genetic again, but when we started using genomic after uh, 2018, so we have the double of the uh, genomic selection uh, or genetic gain, so which is very nice. Uh, some uh, AI studies tell us that more than 70% of the AI, uh, the semen straws sold by the AI companies are from genomic uh, bulls here in Brazil. And uh, for the Yolanda breed, we have a population uh, uh, estimating more than uh, 15 million animals and uh, 150 animals registered by year and uh, 10,000 genotyped by year. So we have more than 35,000 animals uh, genotyped in this Girolando. And this is the, the a flyer about the, the clarified Girolando, which Embrapa has developed it, and CRV and Zoeli are exploring uh, in the uh, commercial way. 
For the Girolando, those are uh, results for the uh, young animals. For milk, age at first Kelvin and Kelvin interval, we have gains uh, around uh, 37, 38, and 25 percent for this trade. So it's working very well. The gain is not so high as uh, for the hosting breed, of course, because the number of uh, phenotypes and genotypes that we have is lower compared to the hosting and other breeds in the US, but it's still good. So this is the genetic gain for uh, the Girolando. And we see when we started in 2018, applying the genomic selection, we have a higher uh, gain compared to the previous results uh, uh, starting in 2000. Uh, another uh, interesting thing that we do for the, the farmers is to provide them uh, uh, a breed composition. Of course, when we estimate the breed composition based on the pedigree, you have always a, a, a result which is not so uh, uh, good as we can uh, obtain based on genomics. And we try to provide to uh, the producers the uh, right breed composition based on genomics. So, uh, and what we do, and we uh, uh, talk to the farmers here in Brazil, is to try to use the genomic selection special for the females in this way. So uh, genotyping all the young females per year, we sell, uh, we uh, say then, okay, you had to get the top five up to 10% as the donor for ET and IFF programs. The uh, 20 up to 40% uh, we should in, uh, use uh, sex semen. Uh, the third level, 20 up to 40%. So uh, you should uh, use as a recipients for those donors here. And then the low level of animals you should include uh, inseminate with uh, beef bulls or put for sale. So in uh, most part of the gear, uh, breeders uh, and farmers are using this kind of uh, uh, strategy. So those results are published already to for Girolando. And as I told you before, so every year we uh, publish the sire summary for Girolando and gear and for uh, the cow summaries for the both uh, uh, breeds. And of course, all those uh, sire and cow summaries include the genomic PTAs for uh, 18 uh, different traits for Girolando and 27 traits for the gear. So for hosting and jersey breeds, we uh, are not using genomics, uh, let's say, uh, 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 made in Brazil. For us, we are using all the results from the CDCB, all the CDADN. So in general, the producers in Brazil uh, send all the samples to be genotyped uh, in Canada or in the US. And you have about 15,000 hosting cows genotyped in Jersey, just about uh, 15,000 uh, uh, these days. So uh, I just assumed the national program for Jersey, and we intend to develop the, all the, the genomic prediction equations for the Jersey here in Brazil, especially for some traits like uh, heat tolerance, as we have done in the gear. So, and we Sergio here has a program uh, and we are participating in this project about embryo genotyping and we hope we can offer this strategy soon for the Brazilian farmers, right? Okay. So, uh, and now what we are uh, doing is the multi-grid genomic evaluation include hosting, Girolando and uh, uh, gear all together. And we have some previous results based just on the, the quantitative approach. But now we are just getting the first results using the, the, the genomic approach. So we hope in less than a year, we're going to have all the uh, genomic evaluation for those breed together. So as a conclusion, uh, we have in Brazil the pasture-based genetics. 
uh, available progeny testing schemes in Brazil for both Orlando and Gear breeds, but there are other breeds like Cindy and Guzera, and we intend to use genomics uh, for those breeds in a short time. Uh, our uh, testing schemes are based on genomics now. Farmers are using genomic selection, especially for young non-phenotyped candidate, males and females. So uh, the, uh, the farmers are using uh, genomic selection in Brazil in a very uh, high level. And uh, most part of the semen from gear and gear Orlando breeds that are selling by the AI studs coming, uh, are coming from the uh, genomic bulls. I think that's it. Thank you.